Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to give you guys a concrete idea you can use for scriptable objects inside of a Unity game. So you'll see here in this folder, I've created four instances of a scriptable object. So these are all saved as .asset files within our game project. And each of these files store certain information. Uh, you can see that you can edit it inside of the inspector quite easily, just like a MonoB script. Uh, the difference is that these asset files created from the scriptable object script don't get attached to a mono behavior directly. These are independent files that will exist inside of your game object, and they can be pulled into a mono behavior. Um, so you can basically set these objects as a field value, um, which um, we can kind of demonstrate that right here. So you can see here the shop script would actually be able to take a shop scriptable object asset file, but that's for the next video. Um, so let's go back over here to game items. So the idea here is that you can actually create a big list of things that exist inside of your game or data to use inside of your game without having, let's say like a MySQL database. So if you need something a little bit more lightweight than that, uh, you can just come in here and do something like create items game item and create a new copy of the scriptable objects. So by doing that, you can just have a big folder with a whole bunch of scriptable objects and they can represent all the items that exist inside of your game for inventories, shops, and stuff you might find in a treasure chest if you're making an RPG. Uh, so let's take a look at how this script actually looks. Um, in this case, it's pretty simple because we don't generally want to write methods inside of these scriptable object classes. You can definitely do that, and sometimes it makes sense. But at a base level, they were really intended for being able to store certain values inside of your game project to use inside of your game. So we extend scriptable object, so public class name of your scriptable object extends scriptable object. And then here we just have the data which I want to store in that scriptable object which we would obviously take and use in another mono behavior script somewhere else. Now, the magic of scriptable object happens when you create a way for it to be added to your game project as an asset. So the easiest way to do that is to use the create asset menu attribute, which takes a file name, the default name for the file itself, and the menu name, the path to actually uh, basically run the command to create the scriptable object. So you can see item slash game item, and if we go over here to the um, project folder, we can do create items slash game item. And just like that, we've created the scriptable object. We can drag this into a mono behavior script. We can edit the values within that game um, object, which will not change unless we manually do that inside of the editor or while the game is running inside of the editor. So it's not a good idea to usually change the values of our scriptable objects here because uh, I mean, change it when the game is running, because if it's in the editor, it'll save those values to the actual asset files in our game project. But if it's a built game, it won't save those values. So you'll get a lot of inconsistency there and you don't want to actually overwrite this data, um, like accidentally changing the value permanently within the game when you only meant it to be sometime after the game has started in a specific file rather than for the entire game project as a whole. So uh, generally, Try not to set these values outside of the editor, unless you really understand what you're doing. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, you can create scriptable objects. The fields don't necessarily need to be serializable. And we can take these game items and create an inventory system or a shop system by just referencing these files to create basically a list of which game items should exist inside of the inventory of a shop or a player, um, adding copies of this data to those shop inventories or player inventories. And we'll be talking about that more in the next few videos. So I'm going to leave this one here. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next Unity video.